Oh, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Or, welcome to, if you're not somebody coming back. Anyway, we got some high pressure over the area right now. And uh, just a second ago I saw 109 on there. So I figured it was a good time to start shooting a video. Notice that the, the wind is way down low because... Um, uh, not because, but with that, I decided to do some work on my uh, uh, wind connections, on my PMA connections inside the battery room. And I'll get to that in a little while. What I first want to do is uh, going to head down to the garden house here, kind of a little on a quick side. And uh, I'll show you, you can see all my corn stalks in the uh, compost pile there and uh, yeah my water's almost halfway down on these uh, totes that's because it has been hot and dry and windy but you can see all the corn is gone there's an opening through here I still have some uh, uh, green beans some uh, growing in the center here and I didn't want to uh, kill them yet but what I'm going to be doing here is getting I'm going to clean off that vine over there by that last corn stalk because it's wrapped around the corn stalk and it's starting to dry up anyway. I'll get all the, the uh, beans off of it and uh, Andy's going to be coming to visit so we'll have some of those beans with our uh, um, steak because I did pick up a couple of uh, filet mignons uh, that I'll cook, bake and wrap and cook for us for one of the evenings and then on another evening maybe I'll make um, uh, spaghetti with Italian sausage. And for lunch, I've got all of the fixing to make homemade pizza. But we'll see if it's too hot to turn the oven on. Because I don't have my outside pizza oven done yet. All right. So, as you can see, everything's looking good out here now. And uh, everything's really coming up nicely. The uh, radishes and the beets and the kale and the peppers over here. Everything's looking good. The pumpkins over there. I've got... Um, cucumbers all over the place here in different locations so i'm be getting some of those off and making uh pickled peppered cucumber slices i like those they're pretty darn good to munch on every now and then and uh, another thing i like to do is a, th a thing called chili dilly where i use a uh, uh, italian dressing and i mix it with uh, hot jalapeno peppers and uh, um, cucumbers and or sliced cucumbers and uh put that in a canning jar, refrigerate it for two or three days, and then those make great snacking items too. All right, so as you see my uh, my husky cherry tomato plant here is uh, trying to take over the garden house, and uh, plenty of tomatoes here, and I've got a, another irritating fly bothering me. So they always know when my hands are occupied, and then they land on my uh, back, so I they know they, I can't use my hand to swat them. All right. So, what did I do today? Well, I got up and realized it was going to be a hot day today because I was watching the news and weather on TV this morning. And I've got to get up and take my antennas down. The wind is beating the heck out of them. And my reflector screens on the back are actually bent and too close to the um, antenna pieces. So... I gotta take them all down, straighten them all out, and put it back up again. And I'm thinking instead of a two-piece pole, I'm gonna get a whole uh, one-piece pole. That's a piece of three-quarter inch gas pipe. I got a 10-footer there, but I'll go with a 21-footer and go all the way up. So I did go into town and uh, I refilled a couple of propane bottles. Uh, this one's ready to go get refilled. I've got a fresh one on the uh, barbecue. And I got one of my 100-pounders in here that uh, I got to slide out and take around back to the, uh, the propane place. The reason I wanted to get those filled up is because I ordered a new um, wall heater for inside the cabin. I'm going from 10,000 BTU up to 20,000 BTU, so it'll warm up the place faster and run less often when the winter comes around. But I didn't want to wait till the last minute, so I got it now. And uh, I had it shipped to Andy's house because uh, 
Uh, a lot of these places don't like shipping to P.O. boxes, and that's what I have. So Andy's bringing it up with him, and uh, um, I'll have my other one out already and get this one ready to install. All right. So in the uh, electric room here, I've got my extra fans turned on here, that one and this one. This one sucks air in because it's in the shade, cool side of the cabin. Blows it across my inverter. And this one blows down here because there's one that um, takes the, the hot air out of the um, inverter right down here, built into the inverter. And what this one does is it scoops that out on the shelf and blows it out through the room here. Neither one of these two fans are on right now. Um, this one got, just got disconnected because I was working on the wiring here. And what I did was, this one used to be connected right here to this positive pole. And what I did was I took it off of there and I put it down on the last battery, on the positive pole of the last battery. And then the, the negative used to be connected over here onto this negative pole of the battery. And I took that off of there and I put it up here on the first battery on the negative pole. So now, when my PMA starts producing electricity, it's going to put it in across the whole bank, rather than just into one battery bank, or one battery set in the center, and then have to trickle out from there. This one's going to have a positive on one side, a negative on the other side of the whole bank. So picture that like um, a whole line of batteries in one straight run. One positive is on one end of it and the negative is on the other end of it so it's got to run through all the batteries and that's a, a better setup that's the way you really want to do them I uh, I was short of wire when I did the last one so I just used what I had to get it set up and working and it's been doing okay but it puts too much pressure on the center battery right here so I took it out off and I set it up the correct way now when you're doing stuff like that you've got to remember that you're going to shut down everything so I went inside I shut all my breakers off at the breaker panel I come out here and I shut my inverter off here the reason to do that is because if you start playing around with those battery cables and it slips out of your hand and you make an arc across there you could blow the electronics in one of these things and that gets it to be an expensive repair so it's you're better off just shutting everything down so there's no draw on the system while you're doing that and the best time to do that or shut down on that is like like I said when it's calm when you're uh, not worried about uh, using a lot of electricity inside everything you can shut off for a little while so that's what I did and it took me 15 minutes but I got everything done and then I got some of my my uh, battery terminal protector and I sprayed all my terminals and cleaned them all up I got my little wire brush up there Got everything all nice and, and, and clean and protected, so ready to go again. Another end of next month, end of August, would be the time for me to go through and check all of the electrolyte levels. And I've got my little battery filler here. Handiest little thing that you can ever buy right there. Go to any automotive store, you'll find these there. And you're only going to use um, distilled water. You don't want to put regular tap water or anything like that in. You're going to use distilled water like this. That's uh, that's what batteries like. Okay, so um, excuse me a minute while I set the phone down and reconnect that one fan, just in case. You get to look at the sky while I'm doing this. All right, we have fanage. The fanage is running. Oh, well, you notice that the, on the um, the memory here has all been erased down to zero. That's because I had to shut this thing down. I used the breaker to shut it down before I did my connection because there was no input from the PMA, so I wasn't worried about uh, blowing anything up. So I made sure I shut, shut this down first, and then I made my connection changes, and then I turned it back on again, and it, it booted up to a brand new boot. So 
It's showing that there's uh, no watts coming in, but there's no stored amp amps are there. Um, the peak watts on it has something right there. Amps peak and watts peak. So the wind did blow a little bit since I reconnected it, but that's all I got on it. All right. So one other thing. Uh, before I cut this off, I'm going to show you over here. I picked up another um, solar panel kit from Harbor Freight and a battery. Now, this is really a good deal. If you get the coupons, if not, just go online to harborfreight.com and, and uh, sign up for coupons and, and get the coupons for these. Because what I got, got this was that solar panel kit was, I had a coupon for it for $149.99. Okay, so that was a great markdown for that. It's 100 watts of solar. It, it comes with two lights, LED lights with, with cords. These are like 25 foot cords with switches on them. So you, you don't have to plug them and unplug them. You just hit the switch, turn them on and off. It comes with a, uh, a splicer to con connect all the four panels together to come into one wire to go up to your solar controller. It comes with a 10 watt solar controller. Uh, while I'm at it, I will remind you, this is 10 watt. So don't try hooking up two sets into this one controller. You have to use a separate controller with each one or you'll have to get a larger controller separately in order to do this. All right, because this is only a 10 watt controller and these, this one set here puts out like six and a half watts. I mean, um, 100 watts. And this is a 10 amp, I'm correcting myself, 10 amp controller. And these put out 6.5 amps or something like that. Okay, so if you hook two of them up, that's going to be 12, 13 amps. That's going to be too much for that controller, and it'll burn the controller out. So don't do that. Okay, it also comes with these little alligator clips, so you can do temporary connections on a car or a motorhome or a boat. And they show that here. You can do it in your cabin, your motorhome, or your boat. All right, <clears throat> and this is these are amorphous silicon uh, solar cells. These work great in low light or or real bright light. Of course, bright light, brighter the light, the better um, protection you have. And they have blocking diodes to keep them from discharging your battery at night. Then these batteries. These are actually AGM batteries. Okay, you see it right there, AGMs. That's a glass mat battery. And absorbed glass mat batteries don't have to be standing up. They can lay down on their side. They can stand up on their edge. You can put them any way you want because they can't leak, okay? This is only a 35 amp hour battery, but if you get three or four of these to, and hook them all together in parallel and then charge them with a 100 watt kit, you can run a lot of stuff on there. And I'm gonna take you around the back of this box and show you what I'm talking about, okay? Here it says a 100 watt kit. In one day, you'll get a full battery, and that's from a full discharge, okay? You can run a light bulb for 168 hours. You can run 34 hours on your laptop, 34 hours on a small fridge, or 84 hours on an LED TV, okay? So that's just one battery, 100-watt kit, and one day of charging. Now, if you get four of those batteries and put them together, you'll be... In really good shape and you'll, you'll be able to run power tools and things like that for quite a while. Here's what you're, you're looking at on these things. Um, it gives you all the information. Uh, you get USB ports in this controller so you can charge your phone and things like that. And uh, it's got an LED dis display there. It's, a, it's really a decent setup. Now I had a 25% off coupon and it, they took it off the battery because I already had a coupon for those. So I had those those down to $149.99, and the battery is like $69. I got it for just a little over 50 bucks with the coupon, the 25% off. So I think this was near 70 bucks, and it got, it got it down to uh, 50 bucks. Great deal. So for un, around $200, I got this whole setup right here, and you'd be amazed at what you could run on this. It's it's really amazing. 
and they, they work well in low light and they come with their own stands built right onto the solar panels. And then they have these little kit with the little brackets that you can fasten the panels together so you make it one solid array. I wouldn't trust them out in the wind and um, I make my own mounts for them. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be setting this one up and this is one that's going to go on my new room between the containers. That, that's going to be running my lights and be emergency backup, things like that. I can run a, if I want a radio out there, I can run my radio off of it. And I won't be bothering anything in the cabin here. All right? All right. So I wanted to get through all of that. And I'm going to show you one other thing. Um, I, I have uh, one of my subscribers, Natasha and her sister from New York, are going to be uh, moving out and homesteading themselves, I think, in Texas. Well... Um, I told them that uh, you can actually modify. This is one of the um, incoming of the uh, Hover Freight solar panels right here, okay? So I've only got three of them up here because I put one on my garden house. But they come into this junction, and then you have one cable that comes off of there. And I have that running over and being tied in. That's this one right here. It's tied into this uh, solar controller that Andy gave me. Uh, this doesn't have a readout on it, but uh, that's okay. I can tell it's charging because the green light is flashing. And you have to set this one for flooded batteries. That's what I did. Orange light would be gel, and the green would be for sealed batteries, which would be that one out there. But anyway, I had to cut the plug-in end because it uses this type of plug-in. This is hard to free. And I use this type of a plug-in, which is a like a little RC8 type plug that plugs in there. Well, I don't like those connections at all, and I will end up modifying this one and tying it into the hard wire position right here. Okay, so what, that's what I did here. And in order to find out which wire is which after you cut it here, it's very simple. You're going to need a cheap Harbor Freight multimeter. And I set it on the 200 volts DC right there. Okay. And then you would turn it on after you cut the wire, cut that plug end off the wire. And you take your two probes here and you check across the wires. Now, if it comes back with a weird display on there, you've got your probes hooked up backwards. Switch them around, and then you'll get a reading on how much voltage the solar panels are putting out. All right, and then and once you get that, make note of which one the red is touching, which wire the red is touching, and then take a piece of red shrink tube and slip it over that, heat it up, and uh, now you've got your, your positive marked and your black negative. That's all there is to it. Very, very simple. And you get rid of those little stupid plug-ins that Harbor Freight uses. Makes it easy for people that don't do not do anything with soldering or anything like that for them to just plug things in. But I do not like these types of connections. They're not reliable. So I usually get rid of those and I hardwire them in. But for a very quick setup, go ahead and use them. I don't like this type of connection here either. So what I do is I just get my own wire and I solder um, copper lugs on there, the right size to go onto the battery poles right here. And I bolt those right onto the battery. I don't clip them on with these clips. It's too easy to knock a clip off. All right. And remember, as always, in your solar and in your wind, when you're setting up any of them, you hook the battery up to your controller first. Then you hook your panels or your PMA to your controller second. All right, always battery first when you're connecting up. When you're taking it apart, battery is the last thing to disconnect. Okay, just a reminder. G-Bear, remind me to give me a thumbs up down, uh, down there. And don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to forget. G-Bear, signing off.